Hello, friends, and welcome back to 20 Questions With. For those of you who are new here, this is my fun way of introducing you to other costumers and costumers by asking them 20 silly questions. Today, we are talking to Melissa of Hat to Hem. Hi. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for having me. Uh, Melissa has been on my channel without being on my channel before because <laughs> she was my secret Santa a couple years ago when we had a costume secret Santa when things were tiny and controllable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. what only 15 of us then like it was I feel like there might have been like 20 people in that secret Santa but it was really small yeah yeah it was, I, I, like, I could actually watch all the videos in one day and oh still yeah have time to, like eat dinner <laughs> like, yeah. was... I have your small... picture on my wall still like oh, really yeah on my little friend board that. Uh, my husband calls this my Luna love good board because I have like a bunch of like things from all my friends are on it so Oh, I love that. And yeah. it works because it was a it was a Ravenclaw costume I painted. It so. was. <laughs> and I still have your your pin holder jar thing. It holds all my extra ribbons. Oh. Yeah. I like I use too. everything you sent me. <laughs> oh. That was the goal. I was like, I'm like, all right, what can, how can I be practical about certain things? The candles are still in my emergency kit though. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel and like what's going on with you right now a lot's going on with me right now by the time this, this airs this the state she is in will no longer be the state she is in that's very cryptic <laughs> <laughs> all right well my name is melissa case my channel is called hat to hem which is named after my little business i do cost you know i do costume commissions and i also do uh, dress alterations i started off doing time lapse videos way back when and then I kind of ended up making a couple of videos where I kind of help people go through a, a pattern, a sewing mm -hmm. pattern for 18th century undergarments and then video diaries. And now I do a little bit of everything. I have a costume drama recommendation video. I have- Woo, costuming video. drama. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I say that, I have to like stop and think like, am I talking about Noel right now? No, I'm not. <laughs> Am I wording this correctly? Do they know I'm not just talking about Noel for 20 minutes? People always think that I mean like that I'm drama and I'm like, no, it was a play on costume no. drama. <laughs> Anyone who knows you knows you're not drama, so it's all good. Oh man. But yeah, it's there's a lot of stuff on my vid on my channel right now. And uh right now a lot of the focus is on my pregnancy because I am currently nine months pregnant. So Ooh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm doing two and a half weeks yeah you said something like that earlier today and I was like whoo that's cutting in close okay well you know people always come up to you and they say like oh how far along are you and I'm just like oh I have two and a half weeks to go and they're like oh so any day I'm like what <laughs> well you know they're not actually <laughs> predictable to the day so like well, it can happen early although the first one I hear is usually late I was a couple of days late I think I was two days late. My husband was 10 days early. I was six so weeks we, early. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I bet you were very, you were very much a surprise. Bit of a shock. Yeah. Yeah. You were like saying, oh, well maybe if, if we can't do it before I give birth, we can, I'll arrange it for after to do this video. And I was like, no, we're going to do this before because you're not going to have any time. <laughs> do you feel ready to play 20 questions? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yes, I am ready to play 20 questions. Yes. <laughs> Let's sound a little bit more confident. Okay. We can be woo girls together. Woo! Woo! If you were a potato, what way would you like to be cooked? Ooh. Tough questions first. Yeah, it is a tough one. I think, I think I'd want to be french fries. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you like... Uh, I mean, the idea of getting cut up is not particularly pleasant, but... They, they can last a little bit and then you can share them so yeah do you like yeah. any particular dips or seasonings or whatever I'm pretty basic I like ketchup ketchup and some salt on them and I'm very happy Kiralee sent me some chicken salt which is something you're supposed to put on fries and it turns out it's delicious it awesome. everyone keeps thinking it's the same thing that's on chicken and biscuits and it kind of is but it's more like they took bouillon and ground it up because that's kind of salty too and then you sprinkle that on your fries and it makes your fries go like super it's like having 
we, I'm, I'm my mouth is watering um having like yeah, weird gravy good. for your salt for your your fries but it's not wet <laughs> that's interesting it is that it's sounds really, very interesting it's tasty i i really enjoy it i i put chicken salt and then a little bit of vinegar and i'm all good that sounds good yeah, yeah i actually have a trick for reheating french fries Ooh. yeah because you know like, in the microwave it is not the same thing mm -mm. i'll take a, a frying pan i'll put some usually olive oil in it that's usually the closest thing i have on hand i'll put in some olive oil i'll throw in the fries and then i'll sprinkle them with garlic powder and rosemary and i'll just reheat them in the pan for a couple minutes uh that wow. way and then they're they do all right that sounds great i'm into it that is, um, yeah it's pretty good and they re depending on how old the fries are mm -hmm. uh they reheat pretty well you know how like sometimes when you microwave them there's like a weird kind of bitter quality to them yes bitter might not be the right word but like there's just a, there's like an extra like taste there that wasn't there before yeah Came up in a pan that taste isn't there i i just went into a Be beauty and the beast moment like there's something there that wasn't there before <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes a weird aftertaste of your french fries uh-huh it's not good no you don't want that there. no i'm i'm into this idea of stovetop reheating though uh i have found that also the best way to reheat pizza is in fact on a skillet really i didn't know that yeah do it in a frying pan i don't really put i mean i ha i use a i guess i use a non-stick but like if you have mm -hmm. a stick maybe put a little bit in there but like because it's bread on the bottom it's fine. Yeah. Like put it on like mm, medium and roast that. What is the temperature at which you heat your fries? Like what, what flame? Uh, medium high. Medium high. Okay. Yeah. So put it on medium for pizza and just throw it in there and like scoot it around a little bit. It's really? good. Yeah. It reheats that's, it really nice. That sounds good. <laughs> if you could trade places with any other person for a week, famous or not living or dead, real or fictional, who would it be? I think I'd be interested in trading with Anne Shirley from Anna Green Gables. Oh, uh-huh. Yep. Because, I mean, first off, I think it'd be pretty cool to have like that outlook on life, that nice, dreamy, romanticized outlook. But second, it might be nice to live a little more simply because right now I feel like I always have a ton of things going on yes. and just be like, I'm on a farm. I'm going to read a book. I'm going to go to school. The end. I, I feel and like that's lies because that's not how farms work. But yeah. Oh, I know that. I know that. <laughs> We're talking about fictional life. We're talking yeah. about fictional life, not the actual I live on a farm life. We're talking like I'm yeah. in the kitchen with Marilla messing up a cake life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like I want to be one of the like random nobody students in Hogwarts. <laughs> in Hogwarts. Yeah. Like so nothing completely cr like everyone's like oh, I don't want to be Harry Potter. I want to be into Hermione. I'm like dude those kids go through some shiz. Like I don't want any part of that. I just want to be some kid that's like I get to learn magic and this is fun. Right. I'm definitely in that frame of mind too. Cause I'm just like, no, if I was Hermione, I'd be dead. Right. Like, there's no way I'm going to be able to think that quickly on my feet. Mm -hmm. That's not happening. And also like, that's a lot of stuff to be going through as a teenager. Yeah. If you could learn any one skill in the world without trying like matrix style, what would you pick? I don't know if this is like a stereotypical answer for like us in the costuming world, but maybe doing concept sketches of what I'm working on, like watercolors. That oh kind yeah. Of thing. Mm hmm yeah. I would like to be uh, a bit better at that. And it's one of those things I keep meaning to work on. I've been meaning to work on it. I know, I know. See, that one over there is why I, I don't even know if I'm pointing in the right direction because I don't know how the camera works. But the one that I did for you was like the first time I did that. And it's close. Like, I think I've done it like twice since then. It's and, like perfect. Oh, thank you. But it was also it. very much within my comfort zone. Like it was just, there's no figure involved. It was just the costume. I'm going to go get this thing. You keep I, told myself, I told myself that if it didn't turn out well, I just wasn't going to send it to you. Yeah. Um, but I think I would like to be able to dedicate more time to making stuff like that. And this is like exactly what my costume looks like. Like, I, oh, I had a, I had a printout next to it when I was drawing it. Like, I was very, like, <laughs> I make sure I got it right. But that, I, I would like to be able to do more of that maybe with, like, people in them. Yeah. Know? Yeah, sure. That's cool. Yeah, and also like that was a pretty enjoyable video to edit and that would be kind of easy. Yeah. Uh, all things considered. Uh, but I would like to be able to, I guess, have more confidence with yeah. it. I guess that's also true for everything. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to have a little more confidence in what I do. What is something that a lot of people are missing out on because they don't know about it? I have a bit of a dorky answer. Okay. And I don't know how well this is going to go for like everybody, but I currently work at a library. I mean, I'm on leave now, but I, I work on a library. I'm an avid reader. 
and yeah, of course there's audible and everything but for people who are interested in like reading either like an ebook or listening to an audiobook yeah there's a free app for that called oh audible. yeah there is yeah i'm like and in other people just working at the library and other people who i know outside the library who don't know about overdrive mm -hmm. but they have audible accounts i'm like I'm like no you can you can probably get that book for free on overdrive Oh, I didn't know about Overdrive. I knew about Libby, I think it is. There's I like Libby. I don't actually have Libby. I, I couldn't give anybody any guidance on Libby, but we have Overdrive at my library. So, mm. yeah, so if it's not on Libby, it might be on Overdrive. So I think a lot of people, this is my excuse for using Audible almost exclusively, is that I want it now. <laughs> and when you check it out from, from a library, there are actually folks, there are a ton of these. There's like I know of at least three or four where, and, and you can have all of them and you just sign up. Some of them you have to sign up with your library card and some of them you don't, but you have to wait. Like there's still a waiting period because they essentially have a copy and they, that copy can only be lent out to however many people that they have copies for at a time. Yeah. So it's just like the library. You have to wait for it if it's not available. So part of the reason I use Audible is because I'm like now, 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 because I'm Veruca. <laughs> Yeah, meanwhile, I'm just more secretive. I'm like, I don't want a record of this on my, because you know, when you get Audible, it goes to like your little library, you listen to it later. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't need people to know that I listened to that, that I listened to that like kind of trashy novel just because I was in the mood for that kind of thing. <laughs> Nobody needs to know I listened to this. Wait, can other people see that? <laughs> no, no, but like, oh, okay. I'm still, like, I see it and then I know and I'm just like, mm. <laughs> Oh man, my Audible library is crazy. It has so many, like I have books on like dinosaurs. I have like self-help books. I have like Obama's book. I have like so much trashy urban fantasy. Like mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a podcast that is about reading books. And so it effectively means that I read, I guess, 24 books a year through Audible that I listen to. So like, and they're all genre books. So like Right. There's a lot of that. Yeah, we're big audiobook fans in this household. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband and I actually have a contest every year to see who reads the most books. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I, have, well, I, have, I think my highest is 50, 51. Wow, that's very impressive. That's like a book a week. Yeah, that was the year I got married. Oh. And, uh, we, do audio, we do audiobooks, we do physical books also. But mm -hmm. I posted on Facebook about how I read 51 books that week, and uh, that year, not that week. Oh my goodness, can you imagine? <laughs> Uh, but I read 51 books that year and she was like what did you do that letter week I'm like got married yeah <laughs> <laughs> and for the record, I'm not reading like a book a week like I I stack my books like I have like a book that I read the physical one and I have an audio book so yeah. I have like multiple books going at the same time my husband takes a different strategy he has the audio book and the physical copy mm -hmm. that he would switch off when he was still doing his hour and a half commute now he works from home. He's getting behind the audiobooks. I'm totally winning this year. <laughs> uh, I listen to audiobooks like while I sew and while I wash the dishes and while I do like almost like I we have to read a book every other week because that's how often the podcast is. So mm -hmm. I and I sometimes exceed that. Like I probably do at least a book a week because if I sew, I can listen to an eight hour book in a week. No problem. Right. Like that's easy. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and that's why I'm careful about what books I use when I'm sewing, because if it's like a book that I want to pay attention to mm -hmm. I know not to listen to it then but like a trashy uh -huh. book that you know it's just kind of gossipy and that like, moves quickly yeah that's easy that's fine yeah. I can listen to that while I'm sewing if I'm making too much noise I miss a line I'm not gonna lose track of what's going on I have headphones on I use my giant Bose headphones so I can just like be in the story while I'm like dick, 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 dick. so <laughs> um by the way people you can have both things like you can have audible and the library stuff so you could increase your chances like you could look on the library stuff first to see if it's free and then if it's not use your credit what is something that you wish someone taught you a long time ago so it's not so much that I wish somebody taught me it as much as I wish I had listened to my mom <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> that counts yeah you, you know how like when you're in school and everything you're so caught up on what other people think and everything and she was very much like in, in a very nice way you know, like no one cares what you're doing. No one cares what you're doing. <laughs> no ever. one cares what you're doing. Zero people care. <laughs> yeah. And like, that sounds harsh, but once you stop worrying about what people think about you, it's like, it makes life so much easier because I think that was one of my big hangups without even starting cause tubing because I'm just like, Oh, well, what if, what if I sound like an idiot? What if I do this? What if I do, what if I do this wrong? And I'm just like, like that, listen, no one cares. <laughs> 
Also, <laughs> then then your channel won't be successful and no one will see it anyway. So it doesn't matter. Right? See, there's no there's no risk. <laughs> there's no risk. Like if, if you are awful at this, literally no one will just watch your channel. And so you don't have to worry about it because nobody's going to see it. And then you'll go, oh, no one's watching my channel. And then you'll get better. And then people will watch your channel. Exactly. Those early videos, they skip them. It's fine. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Mine are pretty bad. I leave them up there. I'm like, enjoy, kids. <laughs> yeah, I, I leave them up to be like, hey, look, we all start somewhere. <laughs> yep. I'm like, see this hot mess? It's improved only slightly to this hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> your videos are fun. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I like when I have your videos on in the background and then you like put music on and it's just comp something completely bonkers. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I'm awake now. Okay. I like um, to be as random as possible with my, my music and also be random within a video. So like if I have four, four slots for music, because I do all the editing first and then I throw the music in, I'm like, yes, because then I'm like, we're going to do some merengue, we're going to do some electronica, we're going to do some classical, and we're going to do this like weird electro synth thing. <laughs> I love that you do that. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's always an experience. It's yeah, always I'm just like, like, what the, what's the music choice going to be today? Stay on your toes. I don't, guess correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've once guessed correctly. I'm just like, oh, no, nope, I was wrong. Completely wrong. <laughs> I like to keep people jazzed because I, I find there are some cause tubers that I watch and I watch them deliberately because they chill me out and mm -hmm. I want to be chill, like, especially if I'm like about to go to bed and I'm like, I just need to like zen for a little while. Uh, like um, Nicole of Nicole Rudolph. I was going to say Nicole. <laughs> yeah. Ooh girl can chill me out like nobody's business. Like she is my go-to, especially if I can't sleep. I watch one of her videos and then I'm like, all right, I'm calm now. Um, because her music is so like down tempo and stuff. And I'm like, I you know, this is it's just perfect. Like it's how her voice is perfect. Like, like, oh, stress is just melting away. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm my like, videos are like, no, I want to make you not. excited about cutting. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do some techno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and all that's not to say Nicole's videos are boring because they absolutely are they're not. not boring very interesting and they're very fun but like they're also very like soothing they're very <laughs> soothing yeah I love her videos it like I think everybody's videos have like a different mood to them and and you get you you watch people at certain times to get the thing you need like I I fill space for people <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah and I know that and so I'm like all right I gotta cut something and you're gonna watch me do a time lapse of me cutting this thing which you've seen me cut things before so clearly this is not a new thing let me give you some music <laughs> right exactly that's the hardest part with trying to make videos it's like oh I'm doing this very boring thing that I do in every single video mm -hmm. do I just like cut it down do I not include it do I make so I put weird music on top of it. So I think people don't, or we don't realize that not everybody watches every video. So exactly. while we think, oh, this is boring to somebody who's new, they're like, whoa, I've never seen that before, you know? So exactly. And that's a headspace I need to get into when I'm, I always, like, I always have to take a step back when I'm editing. I'm like, wait, this might be the first video somebody sees of mine. I need yeah. to make sure I'm showing this properly. Yeah. And the people who don't, the people who aren't interested can just fast forward. Yeah. The business of making YouTube is, is, something people don't actually think about they like think oh you're just you're sewing so I'm with you while you're sewing no I'm making a video about sewing and those are two totally separate sports and they are to two totally different skills and they're two totally different mindsets that you have to constantly switch back and forth while you're doing the thing so like sometimes where people are like I wish you had shown blah 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 and I'm like dude make your own video then <laughs> like I can't, I can't always do every single thing every single person wants. <laughs> I, I know for me, I can't speak for you, obviously, but like if I'm approaching a deadline, my video, my footage is, uh, it gets choppier and choppier as things go on. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, I forgot to film that entire sequence of things. Because sometimes what? you just want to sew. Like that's the, that's the other thing, especially if you're trying to do like weekly videos or whatever like sometimes you just want to sew something and like just sew the thing and like you don't want to have to do all those things and you kind of can't because there's no time for that because people don't understand that like in your week you have to sew and you have to film and you have to edit you know like it's a lot of all people... three different yes different. yeah I've had a couple of times where um I've done like a one day make and it's a legit one day make like I'm doing it within this set time period and I'll just keep the camera away from me and I'll just film myself moving around my sewing room. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, I don't 
I don't want to waste the time of setting up a new camera angle. You can't. You're making it a day and that's already hard. Exactly. And sometimes it just feels good to just sew. Yeah. Yeah. It feels really good to just sew. Mm -hmm. I did um, a new style thing in my most, when I made the skirt for Merida here um, Mm -hmm. in my most recent video. And like, I was actually stoked that people noticed it. They're like, oh, you did a little cinematography there. And I was like, yes, I did. (laughs) Thank you for noticing. (laughs) Thank you for noticing. So if you see your YouTuber changing it up and doing some things, please tell them that you saw that and you liked it because it makes them very happy. Very happy. Yeah. Yeah. I forget what it was, but somebody noticed something on my videos. I'm like, you noticed. You noticed. I worked so hard on that. Yeah. (laughs) Would you ever try space tourism if you had the money for it? I want to say yes. Ooh. I want to. Tourism, which sounds a lot less dangerous than some of the other options that could have existed there. Yeah, so, I have three space questions, so this is yeah. I know them. you. Do. <laughs> I know you do. And I'm just like there's certain things I'm like yeah no no, but yeah I'm just like uh, yeah for this for tourism, I think that'd be interesting. Yeah, uh, spend the money and everything, and who's going with me? But yeah. I'd be interested. I'd You're be gonna interested go spend to- a night on the ISS or whatever. Yeah, I think that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't mind that experience. It might have to be a one-time thing, but yeah, yeah. This just yeah. assumes you have the money for it. So yeah. yeah. But at the same time, like I've watched Doctor Who and I feel like when that happens, I feel like somebody's gonna end up dying. But I mean, you could end up dying in space tourism. That's a thing. I mean, right? you could end up dying yeah. going on the freeway. So that yeah, exactly. So like that gave me pause for a second. I'm just like, wait. It's gonna turn into a Doctor Who episode where I'm just like the victim of, of the week. Or <laughs> yeah. But I'm gonna say odds are sure yeah I'd, I'd give it a shot I feel like the disconnect would be enough that I won't quite register that I'm yes. really that that high up you know? I actually agree with you I did skydiving I should actually put that video on this channel I put it on my other channel and I should put it on this one um so I did skydiving at one point and the way I described it because people were like were you scared I was like no because your your brain refuses to accept that that is reality you have this like lovely awesome trigger in your brain where when something like that happened like when you just throw yourself out of a plane your brain is like oh this is a weird movie like (laughs) it does not compute like oh shit (laughs) like that doesn't happen um well at least it didn't happen to me or anybody on my plane because like I I asked everybody on my plane I was like did you did you think that that was real when it was going down they're like oh no not at all (laughs) so you you start realizing it's real when you're real close to the ground and you're about to land and you're like wait a minute how is this gonna go because they don't actually tell you how you're gonna land until right before you're gonna land because oh that's nice they don't tell you you're gonna do anything until right before it happens because you'll forget so so yeah the whole way down I was like oh this is weird (laughs) and I I I might be like that about space I don't know all right this is a two-parter uh oh. <laughs> what is something you thought would be easy until you tried it? Sewing modern clothes. <laughs> oh, dude, yes. Like, no way. <laughs> that's the yeah, thing about know. like historical clothes are so much easier to sew, guys. Like, they <laughs> actually are because the instructions are better. <laughs> they are. And like, it's, it's very more. It, and the thing with sewing historical clothes is like, they're kind of like set rules like oh i'm gonna use interlining for this i'm gonna use this for that i know how to pad this i know that you know because of the this yeah this fabric's a little flimsy i'll put you know a little bit of interlining but then the boning and the course it's going to take the rest of it yeah it's going to handle the rest of it mm-hmm. not so modern clothing and there's no like silhouette really anymore yeah. so like it's kind of like come as you are yeah and like i feel like every time i sew anything that's modern it just doesn't go the way I want it to. That's why I like, I rarely take like wedding dress commissions or any kind of commission that involves modern stuff. I'm like, yeah, not my area. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I'm not into it. <laughs> Even with the, uh, the maternity dress I just did, I, I used a simplicity pattern. It was a fantasy pattern, but like, I totally messed up on certain areas. I'm like, oh, I was supposed to use interfacing there. Whoops. <laughs> like the top was very flimsy. And I don't think it's going to come across in the video or in the pictures or anything, but like I could feel the difference. Mm-hmm. You know? Historical clothes also are very like beefy. Like they have, they have, they will stand up on their own. <laughs> like they have right. structure. You are just present inside of them and everything else is getting taken care of for you, which is not something that happens. Like th- this thing weighs like 
so much. Like when I, I put this on the other day, I was like, oh, that's heavy. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like they handle themselves, whereas modern clothes, mm, not so much. Yeah, no. It's, it's actually it's like part of why I prefer like wearing like a, like I, I would rather wear a Victorian dress than like modern clothes sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of it has to do with like, I like it being tighter in my torso. Mm-hmm. Like I like feeling my, my waist getting, yeah, I yep. like feeling the pressure on my waist. Mm-hmm. Obviously, right, I don't have a waist right now, but uh, <laughs> like typically that's been the weirdest thing with maternity clothes too, because like, I'm just like, the, things are not hitting the way they usually hit right now. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's no, I'm not wearing like a, my, my, my jeans are different. Yeah. You know, my shirt's different. I mean, I say all this, but I'm also the person who's like in literally in jeans and a t-shirt all the time. So I'm either like pajamas or Victorian. <laughs> like there's, there's, no in between. there's not that much in between. <laughs> so it's different kinds of comfort, you know? Yeah. All right. Second part of the question. What oh. was something that you thought would be hard until you tried it? costuming oh okay yeah I I and that sounds like such a cop-out answer but I uh I put off doing videos for a long time and then yeah. the ones that I started doing I was very shy about it like I didn't do any voiceover I didn't have my voice I didn't have my face on camera that much mm-hmm. um but then once I started actually talking to the camera yeah after I took that leap yeah so much it was so easy so much so- easier than I thought it would be so there are parts of it that are really difficult. Oh, I, yeah, definitely. Um, so when you said that, I was like, really? I find it actually kind of hard. Um, <laughs> uh, the talking to the camera part is obviously my forte. So like, I, I think I should just live stream all the time. <laughs> if, <laughs> if I could make tons of money being like a live streamer, I would do that. Because I think like that is not not ever my problem. My problem is like, I hate editing. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to make it clear. I'm not including editing in this statement. No, no. <laughs> I, I literally mean getting in front of the camera, talking to it and showing what I'm doing yeah. and then keeping on with it. But yeah. I think hitting upload that first time was one of the harder things I've had to do. Yeah. But after that, it's just like, all right, here, let's get this done. Let's get it done. Post it. Okay, good. Yeah. Like, I don't even think about it anymore. And I yeah. don't think about talking to the camera anymore. Yeah. I, I think about editing, but <laughs> it's again, editing is a different beast. You can also do like my kind of vloggy style where... I, I edit more than I used to now. And I blame this entirely on Bernadette. Like okay. it's her fault. Um, Cause she's like, Oh, be a good editor. And I'm like, but I don't want to. And she's like, just do it. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. And like people noticed. So that was good. But like just watching Bernadette's videos make me want to edit better. You know? Yeah. But also like, I know that I specifically don't, I like, I leave in my mistakes and stuff that she doesn't do because I want people to, you know, feel the like reality of it and whatever. But my editing style is really just like, I say what I got to say. And then I chop off the front of it and I chop off the back of it. And if you see a blip in the middle, it was because like either something went wrong or my cat cried or I said, um, too many times or whatever. And I cut that little tiny thing out, but like, I, it's not a lot of editing. So, so you can do cause tube and not edit very much. Just, Hey, if you want to do cause tube, do cause tube. That's what I'm saying here. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's room here for everybody. There's room everybody here for has everybody. Different than their brain to the table. Yeah. Like your videos are different from my videos and that's okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's okay. And, uh, even my videos are different from each other. Yeah. And they're, they're like, they're supposed to be different. Like, like I said, like I listen to Nicole for a very specific reason. And if I want to get super like pumped and like screamy about things, I go watch Abby. And if, you know, if I want to exactly. like, <laughs> Abby gives you energy. <laughs> yeah. And if I want to be like kind of comforted, I watch your videos, you know, or, Aww. you know, really? yeah. I, I mean, I, I watch you and Marie all, all the time and like also Bella because you guys are all like chill and it's just like about the sewing and there's no yeah. drama involved, <laughs> which is really nice. So like, yeah. you know, you have a different mood for each person you want to, you want to watch. Exactly. Yeah. I will say that there are some dramatic moments in my video, but it's like really small scale drama. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just cut this pattern out. Now I can't find it, you know? Yeah. Like, like when had... I'm like <sighs> <laughs> in my videos, <laughs> like I can't get this pocket in. <laughs> exactly. I have a video where I'm like rage eating M and M's at one point because I'm just yeah. like, I'm like, I don't have the pattern. They want this done in like three days. They haven't given me their measurements yet. Like, I'm just like rage eating M and M's. I think it's actually think that happened more than once <laughs> during that yeah. just that condition. But like again, trying to keep it real, I 
I include that stuff in there because I want people yeah. to see it happens. It happens to all of us. Yeah. Even that was a commission that I was being paid for by a company yep. to do. It's really important to say that because like people assume that it's perfection and it's so easy for everybody. And we're like, no, 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 we're all humans. It sucks for everyone. This whole thing is hard. We get it. It's like, there are parts of it that are hard. There's different parts of it that are hard for each person and they are different per person, but we all have the same thing. So like, it's good to show. And it's also good to have people like Bernadette who make you aspirationally want to be better at, cause she, she's like, you know, she sews and whatever, but really what she's doing is making movies. Like she's making tiny little movies for us to watch. Her or, stuff is next level. Like it's- yes. Or doing like research videos, which she spends so much time on. And like when she edits those movies, like she's editing for days and days and days. And, and I'm just like, wow, her skill is in sewing, but really her skill is in storytelling. Exactly. And that comes across in her videos. Yeah. So and, they're just different. Yeah. Although I've been rewatching some of her videos because they really inspire me to get into this room my selling room but like she has mistakes in there like she oh, has yeah. areas that she messed up and I feel like people forget that oh yeah mm -hmm. like I think I feel like it's very easy for people to like oh it looks so pretty oh look her her end result was so good and it's like yeah but did you watch that whole thing where she did that whole step where she didn't have to or yep. did you see mm -hmm. that part where and like it's human it's just yeah it's like she's not on like a pedestal or anything it's nope. just She's as human as any of us. She's just making really pretty videos. Yeah. They, she's just really, really yeah. good at editing. Like she's yeah. so good at it. And she's go, so good at like setting her camera up right and filming correctly. And like, mm -hmm. you know, like that's her skill. So, exactly. and you can't compare yourself to that. Like you can't compare yourself to anyone else. Like I like making vlogs. So that's what I'm doing. Exactly. I like a range of things. And I like that I have a video on my channel for whatever mood I'm in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about becoming an adult caught you completely off guard? Body aches, like certain kind of body aches. And like, I, I can't tell if it's because I'm in my late twenties or because of the pregnancy or anything, but like my body is not reacting the way I, I'm used to reacting right You're now. You're hitting the wall for sure. I'm, I'm like, oh, my legs cramp. I can't even like bend and pick up my phone. What is happening? <laughs> it gets worse. Oh man, yeah. I'm, I'm acutely aware of my knees at all times. <laughs> <laughs> and i still try to act like i'm 22 and i am not <laughs> that's bad that's fair yeah there's i definitely have moments where i'm just like oh yeah i'm not in my early 20s anymore mm -hmm. i'm still like that and i'm in yeah. my early 40s so i'm still like yeah. oh man oh i missed that working correctly <laughs> I'm whining then because I'm I am in my late 20s, but it's just like well, it's like, starting. It's starting. Pregnancy changes your body, and you will notice things after you're done being pregnant that you're like, oh well, I guess I broke that while I was pregnant. <laughs> right. Uh I keep having people say, Oh, pregnancy, it's amazing what your body does. I'm like, yeah, I want my ankles back. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, oh man, that was. Like I was mentally prepared for it happening, but still seeing it happen was just right. Totally, belly fine, the belly fine. The swelling of, the, of my ankles, and my feet. I'm like, oh no, what is this? Yeah. My hands. I'm not even wearing my wedding band anymore. It doesn't fit. I'm wearing like an adjustable ring that I got from a sponsor chef. <laughs> what animal would you choose to be? The dog of a childless couple. <laughs> <laughs> That's a solid answer. Yes. Yeah. yeah I, oh man. Our dog is so spoiled. Uh huh. Wait. And she has like she has very like defined roles of what she can and cannot do. But for the most part, she is very spoiled. She has her own chair at my parents' house with her toys that are only at Mom and Pop Pop's house. Of her blankets that Mom Mom doesn't wash because she doesn't want them to smell weird for the dog. <laughs> so, Wait till the baby comes. Things will change a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. That's why I said childless couple. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, if you were gonna try out for a singing reality show, what song would you sing? I'm still trying to wrap my mind around the fact that I'd be doing a singing reality show. I am a horrible singer. So every one of my choices is always like something that would just like really bring that home. Like I Will Always Love You or Four Non Blondes, What's Up or something like that where you're just like, you're gonna know how bad I am. Yeah, there's certain songs where you're just like, oh yeah, no, yeah, not... I'm like, I, sh I should not be singing that song. Nobody should be singing mm -hmm. that song. But maybe the person who's singing it, even that's kind of iffy. Yeah. 
Um, Don't even do that in your car. <laughs> no way. It'd probably be, end up being some kind of show tune. Maybe like Journey to the Past from Anastasia. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Hands down, I would what? pick Anything Goes. Oh, that's good. I had to try out for, um, we did like a fashion show in high school. And like everybody got in, but it's just a matter of like where they're putting you and you, you had to sing a song. And I think I ended up singing somebody to love like just like a oh, the uh-huh. first like the first you know the, the beginning of it so I, I might go back to that because that was fairly easy um okay. yeah it, it'd probably end up being a show tune or something something like that because I feel like that's what I listen to the most mm-hmm. yeah I think also show tunes are written for a variety of different like tones and voices so you could it's easier to find one that like can kind of work for you a little bit better they they tend to be more modulated for that voice so right oh what? another one watch uh watch what happens from newsies oh yeah that's a good song that song motivates me like by the time you get to the end and they're just like nothing happens if you just give in and i'm yeah. just like yeah yeah i'm gonna go do something now <laughs> what about uh cell Rock tango from oh yeah Sabrina? i mean that's just fun like that's 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 a good angry song <laughs> yeah yeah I love that song. That would be a good one too. You need you need buddies for that though. Oh yeah, you need a whole you need to have like a whole group. You need Otherwise, to go going down on that one, yeah, for sure. Yeah. What is the nicest compliment you've ever received? I, I received a lot of nice ones. I work with the public a lot. So, you know, you you know, between being a good waitress and being a good like children's story time presenter, you get a lot of compliments. But I remember once somebody told me my my smile lights up a city. Oh my, my, my smile could light up a city. And I'm just like, oh. That's so great. And that one just sticks out. That one just stands out to me. Like, I feel like I've had some other very wonderful compliments, like being told that my videos are somebody's comfort videos. (laughs) I've had two amazing ones that are very similar to each other on my channel, which melted my heart and made my week, which are, I am the Mr. Rogers or the Bob Ross of CauseTube. And I am like, I just won the internet. Like, yes, you did. (laughs) Those are great. <laughs> Rest of us can just go home. We're like, we're not getting, we're not getting anywhere close to that. You get to be Bob Ross. Like I, I, I like Mr. Rogers is my favorite guy ever, and also Bob Ross. So I'm, I'm here for these compliments. Thanks. I That's adorable. It. I love yeah. that. All right, you can have an unlimited supply of one thing for the rest of your life. What is it? It cannot be money. Is it sushi? Is it scotch tape? Is it black thread? What? Oh, black thread is really thoughtful one when, when, I forget who said that one earlier but I'm like oh that's brilliant it Constance um, I, I mocked her so bad about it and then I actually sent her our like we exchanged personal Christmas gifts and so I sent her like a box of black thread that's fantastic. <laughs> but um I mocked her so bad and, and like upon retrospect I'm just like no that's actually genius it really is well I mean I'll be honest my first thought because you know nine months pregnant was like pasta <laughs> garlic bread you know yeah I mean um, sure yeah. but like for like a selling point of view I would probably say like muslin fabric oh yeah muslin's a good one for sure yeah because I use that I, that's something I always kind of like if I see like they're having a sale at like Joanne's I'll just go and I'll like buy like a whole bowl or maybe two mm-hmm. uh, because I use it all the time I use it for my inner linings I use it for draping I use it for uh just experimenting with stuff so yeah. I'd probably say muslin and that stuff is not cheap sometimes yeah. Because you're buying it in bulk. So also when it is cheap, it sucks. It's always off grain. Like right? you have to you have to stretch it every time for every mm-hmm. cut. It sucks. Like it's no good. So like mm-hmm. if you want good muslin, it's not cheap. Yeah, let's say good muslin. If you could hang out with any cartoon character, who would you choose and why? I don't like where my mind went the first time. <laughs> I would yeah. like to know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. When I was little, I had such a crush on Dimitri from Anastasia. Oh, uh uh-huh. You really are into Anastasia. It really was. And, like, there are definitely, like, things that I was more obsessed with, but, like, I feel like Anastasia's coming up a lot today. Yeah. But I had a crush on Dimitri. Like, no one, like, my mom's, my mom would always say that I would blush when he was on screen. Wow. I mean, yeah. And that's pretty impressive, given that fact I was, like, seven. I've had a lot of, a lot of 2D crushes. But, (laughs) uh, and I think that that's actually part of why I was so, like, interested in seeing the show. I'm like, yeah, I want to see a real Dimitri. Yeah sure yeah right I feel like that's not really my real answer but that is like the honest answer uh-huh. <laughs> in my mind. other than that I think it'd be kind of fun to like hang out with the crew from Sailor Moon oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah that seems like a yeah. good time I mean if I'm hanging out with them I'm probably getting attacked but 
<laughs> that I'm probably gonna be like the victim of the day. <laughs> but, like I think that's like a good time. They're a very positive group. Pixie and Mask is also one of my 2D crushes. So you know we're gonna throw that in there too. Oh yeah, for sure. I mm-hmm. agreed to do that Space Girls Sailor Moon thing with my friends for dragon con one year so i we made a cosplay group thing where it was like sailor moon costumes that were like mm, retro 50s space girl style oh that's awesome yeah they're super cute uh there's no good pictures of them but they were super cute in person and in order to like feel connection i decided to watch sailor moon and i i think that they would be fun to hang out with like definitely yeah yeah, I uh, I grew up with Sailor Moon for the most part. Uh, they were like they were, I forget which channel they were on, but like the old dub was on mm-hmm. like right around the time I was eating breakfast in the morning. And to this day, if I eat Captain Crunch, it makes me think of Sailor Moon. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, because that's how my mind is wired apparently. Uh, and then the the new dub is on Hulu. Yeah, and I was watching that, and like my husband was just kind of like there for some of it. And then, like, eventually he started getting more and more into it to the point where he now calls Sailor Jupiter his girl. <laughs> like, my girl. That's so funny. <laughs> if you could have a personal assistant, what would you have them do? I would probably have them keep track of my calendar for me. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Sounds very lame. But no. my planner is ridiculous right now because I have, you know, the baby stuff. I have selling stuff, video stuff. Yeah. Trying to ease my way into a new, new career stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, which involves a lot of training and a lot of deadlines and a lot of all this and then you have like you know like oh there's a zoom baby shower this weekend or there's a drive-by bridal shower next weekend and just trying to keep track of all of it feels like it takes up so much time what is a drive-by baby shower a drive-by baby shower is when you uh go and drop off a gift in front of somebody's house apparently oh so like a bunch I- of people drove by and just dropped presents off for you yep and I, I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of great. <laughs> that sounds awesome. You get yeah, like, I, all the presents, and you only have to be like, "Hey," and then that's right. it. <laughs> well, I've actually I've been involved with uh, like two similar things. One was a birth. I, I, we did a drive-by birthday thing uh, a while ago, and that was very organized. It was we're meeting at this location, we're gonna go in a line in a, in a procession, and we're gonna go to their house, and like it was very organized. And then my baby shower uh, a couple weeks ago was not as organized, so we were just kind of like sitting out there for like two hours. It's like one car drove up. And then left and then one car which so I'm just like somebody all right but it actually worked out because I actually was able to have a conversation with family members that I haven't seen since before I was pregnant oh that's cool I'm like oh, I missed you that sounds like a good time though like I'm glad that you got a baby shower at least like there's a lot of people I'm, who haven't gotten parties right so that's great yeah I'm, I'm very lucky that so much so many of our family members and several friends live relatively close by they were able to do that I yeah. even had a, uh, I had an aunt and uncle drive from um, New Jersey and come over to us. And not like close by New Jersey, like further up New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And they actually drove out just to drop off a gift and say hi. Oh, that's really sweet. That's yeah, it was really awesome. touch. What song has the ability to cheer you up? Almost There from Princess and the Frog. Oh, uh-huh. That's a great mm-hmm. song. Yeah, that one, I, I love it. It cheers me up. It kind of like ups my confidence a bit and if I'm feeling like really low and like if I'm like oh what what am I doing this isn't gonna work like that song gets me like it it, it completely flips my mood I'm kind of of the opinion that Tiana is the best princess yeah I love Tiana I mean obviously I love Merida because I also think she's awesome but I kind of think Tiana is the best princess so yeah she's inspiring she's definitely in my top three I think yeah I think she's wildly underrated like oh, people, definitely. people forget about her all the time. And I'm like, she's actually awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. Her, vi- her movie is beautifully made. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not without issues, but all Disney has some issues. <laughs> sure. But uh, I, I love her movie. Yeah. Yep. Uh, she- but I love Prince and the Frog, the Princess and the Frog. I love the animation. I, it makes me sad that that's the last like 2D animation that we got. Yeah. But yeah, I, I love her movie. If you could meet any historical figure and ask them only one question, who would it be and what would you ask? All right, so this might be my Philly area coming out, but like, I feel like I would want to meet Ben Franklin. Oh, party. But I'm not sure what I would ask him, but whatever it is, he'd probably have like a really like ridiculous answer to it. Like a, he'd probably like tell me just like a, a phrase instead he'd of- like try to grab your boobs. <laughs> yeah, he probably would, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But you know, Ben Franklin. So. I mean, I got yeah. randomly <laughs> smooched by Richard Branson and I feel like that was okay. So, you know. <laughs> it's all about what, what is and what is not okay with you personally, you know? At that moment, yeah. <laughs> In that particular moment. Yeah. There are a lot of there are a lot of factors that have to be correct with certain things. Yeah, an unexpected kiss from Richard Branson could go either way. <laughs> it really could. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably want to meet Ben Franklin and I don't even know what I'd ask him. I probably just want to just like feel like, oh my God, that's Ben Franklin. Yeah. Which makes me sound like a weird a really weird fangirl. <laughs> but I mean, I want to ask Einstein how he liked his cheeseburger. So oh, I like that. Your last of the 20 questions, how long would you last in the zombie apocalypse? Oh, not long at all. You're, you're not, a... not long at all. I'm a chicken and I'm not fast. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, like my best option would be if I could hide. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fair. Hide really well, but even that will not save me from a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> well, you got to have food and water, right? So like, yeah, yeah no, I would, I'd probably last as long in a zombie apocalypse as I'd last like the hunger games. It's just not happening. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not happening. I just got to accept my fate. I was thinking about these people that like in these movies where they hide forever in a spot. And I'm like, they don't ever address the bathroom issue. Right? Like, how, how is that going down? Right? Exactly. I want to know. Yeah, I would not last long. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it, it just it just wouldn't happen. <laughs> All right. Super controversial bonus question. I'm ready. Is a hot dog a sandwich and why? In my head, I know it is a sandwich, but in my heart, it feels like it's its own thing. Okay. Yeah, like I, the, the elements that make it a sandwich are all there. Uh huh. But like, I still can't accept that it's a sandwich. Okay. <laughs> it's just like, it's just like in my heart, I'm just like, no, it's its own thing. And that's just it. It's kind of like I have a hard time accepting like a burger as a sandwich, even though I know it is, it still feels like its own thing. A burger is way closer to a sandwich than a hot dog is. I know that. I know that. But again, in my mind, it feels like it should be like its own category on the menu. Sometimes it is. And sometimes it's under the sandwiches. That's why it always confuses me in restaurants. I'm like, where am I, where am I buying the burgers? It depends on how, how your diner is set up. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you for joining me today, Melissa. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> I will leave a list of Melissa's accounts down below so that you can go check her out and show her some love. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below about what you guys are up to. And I will see you soon with another video. Bye guys. Bye.